Hello everyone and welcome to this video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Whitefield and welcome to the first video of 2017. Now that we're actually into 2017 that is. Um, I'm glad you all enjoyed my New Year's video uh, with Sansui 350A and Road Geek. Um, Sansui 350A was very pleased that um, you all enjoyed his Barney, Sim uh, Barney Gumble impression. Anyway, I um, have recently been getting a hell of a lot of comments on my Restoring the Acer Aspire 5742 video. And, um, you know, it's just kind of left me feeling that, um, well, obviously you, obviously you guys loved that video so much that I've decided to do another Acer recovery video. So, here we go. <clears throat> what is this machine, you might ask? How did I come by it? Well, it's a, um, this is an Acer Aspire M3241. It has, um, an AMD Phenom uh, X4, so that's a quad-core phenom, clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. Um, it has 2 gigs of DDR2 memory, 320 gig Western Digital Caviar SE hard disk, and an optical drive. Now, I am going to recover this machine because it came to me with a pretty, uh, a pretty worn out, shall we say, install of Windows XP. So, what I'm going to do is um, actually restore it. There's, there is uh, still, there is actually still a um, recovery partition on here, but I can't actually access it um, because I don't know. I, th I think uh, when the previous owner installed XP, they uh, couldn't actually, they, you know, that kind of overwrote the partition. However. Um, by using Hyrene's boot CD, I am going to be able to hopefully reactivate that partition. So, let's get going. Ooh, that. <laughs> I'm hearing a rattling and I'm not sure what it was from. I was, I was a bit scared that that was from the hard disk, the hard disk is uh, trying to make a bed for death. So, what I need to do is go into the Linux-based recovery environment, part Ed magic. Uh, yeah, this, this is old, but it will work. And then just basically click the start option. And, uh, well, this, this will take quite some time to load, so I will come back once it has loaded. So I'm at the partition, uh, the Parted Magic desktop, and for some reason the CD has been ejected. Um, I'll just kind of leave it in the tray and leave the tray stuck out like that. Um, but what I want to do is go to the Partition Editor. Oh, see, <laughs> decided to um, re-inject the CD. Um, now, what I want to do is go to the um, the PQ service partition, and I want to. Well, I want to change a couple of flags. So, uh, I think. If I know how to do this, oh, manage flags. So I right click on it, select manage flags, um, uncheck diag, check boot. So I think I can now exit out of that. Wait, has I even committed? I'm just going to double check. <laughs> Always a good idea to, uh, you know, double check your work 
then you're not waiting. Uh, this didn't take too long to load up actually, but um, yeah, I still think it's always a good idea to double check your work. And now what I'm going to do is uh, reboot the machine. Just as a wee precaution, I am going to hold down Alt and F10, which is the magical let's boot from the recovery partition command. Oh, well, whatever happened, this is now loading. It would not load before. So we have made at least some progress. That is good. Uh, oh. Oh, no, I think. Yeah, just boot. So, <laughs> what happens here? Oh, there we go. This is a bit slow. I mean, on XP, this is pretty damn quick. How it's going to be on Vista, I do not know. But I will install the appropriate service packs and what have you. Um, what I'm pretty much going to do is, you know, restore this back to, you know, kind of a factory image. And then set it up, I think. Okay. Now it's telling me, please wait a moment. So now I am in the Acer E Recovery Management. So what I want to do is restore system from factory default. This action will erase all existing data on C. Recovery will require plenty of um, power. Make sure plugging... Please make sure plugging in your AC card. Um, great grammar, guys. Um, <laughs> please detach all external storage device. Okay, just the one then. Uh, attached to the system, e.g. USB hard disk flash disk. Okay. Uh, I don't believe uh, there's any of those plugged in. I mean, the card reader's uh, connected, but that's connected internally. So that's fine. There's no cards in there. The card reader is behind this wee slide down panel. I love these slide down panels, but the, there's very few of them that uh, seem to have a nice elegant uh, way of opening and closing them. It just, I, it just seems to be something that they can't seem to pull off. You, I mean, this one, you've got a, it's supposed to be kind of soft eject almost, but yeah. Anyway, hard drive named LEDC, blah, 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 blah. partition label, pfft. Partition size, uh, yeah. Uh, this action will erase all existing data on partition. Press OK to continue or press cancel to abort. Okay. So... I think what's going to happen now is this is going to uh, this is going to restore itself. Uh, at least I would hope that that's the case. Apparently, time left is four minutes fifty-five. Take a lot less time than my Acer Aspire fifty-seven forty-two. But um, there you go. Uh, so hopefully, this will restore, and I will report back once it has done so. So the. Um, the restore, I think the deployment of the image has completed. Um, now this uh, seems to be uh, doing a lot of uh, tying up of the um, loose ends. You know, crossing the T's, dotting the lowercase j's, so to speak. Okay, so now we're at a screen that says finished. Restore finished. 
please press OK to restart this computer. So I suppose while I'm doing that, I think what I will do is uh, remove the DVD from the drive. The higher end boot CD. Oh, stop that! You stop that right now! Behave yourself! This has apparently got label flush. I wonder if that's kind of light, light scribe. Okay, just, yeah. These cases were quite interesting. The uh, drives behind Wii flaps. To be honest, in my old age, I kind of prefer the ones that, the cases that actually expose the drives. I see why they do this though, you know, so it, it looks a bit cleaner. I mean, it's it's like with these kind of slidey down things, but unfortunately, I mean, these are part, these are bits that just, you know, would probably break off, you know, and if they did, this machine would look extremely ugly. I think uh, one of the best. Well, I'm not sure because you know, kids would break it off. One of the best designs I actually saw for concealing stuff was um, the uh, flip down door of my 2007 custom build. Um, which uh, actually, uh, but that had the USB ports as well. This machine, the USB ports and audio ports are up here. Which is uh, quite an interesting uh, place to put them. I quite like that. Because you've got a wee platform that I guess you could store some devices on, you know, a, a wee docking station or something. It just, it looks quite smart. I, I do like the design of this system. I mean, obviously, once you get inside it, it's very, very cramped. But, um, you know, the external appearance is quite nice. Okay, so now we are headed for, yep, here we go, Windows Vista. Uh, please wait while Windows continues setting up your computer. So I have to wonder actually, but you know, before I do pause and let it continue on its own, uh, uh, what, um, exactly what is this going to do? Is this going to... Is it just taking ages to get to the out-of-the-box experience? Or has it uh, got another um, few things to do? I would hope that uh, the amount of time that it's taken is, it's got some more stuff to do. But, you know, we'll, we'll find out. We'll, you know, it'll do what it's got to do. And, um, yeah. So I'm just going to leave that to do. So, now I'm back, and it turns out um, that that please while well, Windows finishes setting up your machine probably did have uh, some loose ends to tie up. So, now we are here at the out of the box experience. Uh, Windows Vista Home Premium with a nice Acer logo. You know, just in case you forgot what machine that you bought between buying it and getting it home and powering it up. So, yes, we, we, we will agree to the uh, terms and conditions. Um, what I'm going to do, just register this to user. Um, and I've got some Windows backgrounds, including some quite uh, interesting Acer ones. Um, I'll just let the default, I'll just let uh, Acer choose a default one though. Um, called it Acer Aspire 3201. Uh, yes, use recommended settings. Home. Uh, oh, do I want to set up McAfee? Uh, let me think about that. No, get that off of my machine right now. 
Okay, um... So what's going to happen here is, um, well, we're going to get the, um, Windows Experience Index Test. That's going to happen, and we're going to see a few billboards about Windows Vista, because that is the perfect thing to do. Advertise it once the user has installed it to their system. I guess it's just kind of, yeah. Stroking your ego. Have, have I done the right thing? Oh yes, I know I've done the right thing because these things have come up telling me so. Please wait while Windows checks your computer's performance. Getting it done just got more fun. Time is precious. More than ever you need a system that is simple, easy, natural and enjoyable. So you can get things done and focus what matters most in your life. Actually, I can tell you that getting it done got a lot less fun. Um, you know, I... I did a lot better at university in my first semester uh, of my first year when I had Windows XP rather than the second semester where I had Windows Vista and I was constantly having a wrestle with it. <clears throat> connect and communicate like never before. It's now e safer and easier to connect with the people who matter the most. Whether you choose video, uh, voice, video, photos or text, you're going to get an amazing whatever. Yes, actually, Vista was a lot easier to connect to networks and XP. Turn everyday moments into lifetime memories with um, simplified tools for uploading, cropping, cutting, creating photos. Windows Vista makes it easier and more enjoyable to share your excuse me, favorite memories. I'll give it that the photo gallery in Windows Vista was fantastic. In fact, that's what uh, one of the things that made me stick with it because. Photographs matter a lot to me. Uh, connect, play, have fun. With Windows Vista, you've got the hottest titles, the latest features, the most visual, vivid 3D graphics, and so many ways to connect more safely with the worldwide gaming community. Keeps going on about safety, and that was a big thing in Vista. If by safety you mean nagging you every two seconds with the user account control, Oh, the power to find everything. With Windows Vista, you can quickly find programs, files, emails, and it's easier to search the internet. Actually, yeah, it was, thanks to the search in the start menu. Um, a more secure environment. Spend less time fixing problems and enjoy a faster, more reliable online experience with Windows Vista. So, yeah, I mean, Windows Vista did bring a lot to the table, you know, and let's be, let's not beat around the bushes here. It was a very pretty operating system, a very beautiful operating system. I, I liked the way that Vista looked. I must admit, 7 did look quite strange, you know, next to Vista, with its um, non-dark title bars on maximized windows and the the um almost transparent um taskbar i mean vista had it but it was a lot more uh translucent than sevens was but i think um the look of seven kind of grew on me because you know windows seven was that much better but vista <clears throat> i mean it brought a lot of what we uh, to take for granted now, like the um, the ease of access center. There was sure there was no magnifier, but it did bring what the ease of access center. Um, what else? Have uh, indexing. That was indexing was good. It you know really kind of helped to make searching for files a lot easier. I found that the best way to set that going and uh, have it working as well as it could was to leave the machine on you know just I remember uh, heading out one afternoon and just thinking right I'm gonna leave my computer running and let it index stuff and it did anyway so now we are loading Vista I've been feeling a bit nostalgic believe it or not for uh, 10 years ago to 2000 and Six to 2007. So, you know, messing about a bit with Vista. Kind of playing right into that. I mean, I'm not going to go and install Vista on everything I own. 
But, um, you know, it's certainly nice to kind of play with it every now and then. Yes, I do complain an awful lot about it, but to be honest, back in the day, I did stick with it for quite a while. Yes, I used to jump back and forth between it and XP, but, um, you know, there was something I liked about it that kept me coming back to it. So, you know, it must have had uh, something. Oh, now the system appears. Yep, it's rebooting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a... We'll have a look at the, um, the uh, image on this thing. You know, see what software came with it. Um, and then I'll end the video there. Because, you know, I mean, I've got service packs and all kinds of stuff to install. Yep, I get sound. Ah, preparing your desktop. We're at a kind of a desktop. McAfee, program setup. Remind me later. Stop installing absolute noise onto my computer, okay? Just, just stop it. McAfee. Ugh. I really hated that. Like, either give us an antivirus program or don't. Don't give us these blooming trials. You know, that, that leads a lot of people to believe they have antivirus protection. And at one point it did lead me on, but luckily I was able to... Um, well, I was able to put a stop to that pretty quickly. Um, but, um, yeah... It did um, lead a lot of people on, you know, they thought that they had um, uh, antivirus software and they didn't realise that um, actually it only had a limited shelf life. You know, 90 days and then suddenly you're unprotected. Right, okay. Ah yes, I used to love this welcome centre in Windows Vista would list uh, the main specs of your machine. So, um, Windows Vista Home Premium, AMD Phenom 9150E quad-core processor, two gigs of RAM, ATI, um, ATI Radeon HD 3200 graphics, computer name, Acer Aspire 3201. Ah, right, this is not actually finished though. This is actually going to install a lot more programs. That's... Yeah. Actually, it's, it's installing updates, so uh, yeah. But uh, what can I tell you about what's on it so far? Well, the bloody Windows Live... Oh, no, that's Google Desktop. Do you remember when that was a thing? Yuck. Yeah, no. I like the Google Toolbar, but Google Desktop, yeah. Um, so you have Acer Arcade Live. I bet that's kind of like the um, oh, the Wild Tangent games things that you see on modern machines. Game Zone, ugh, hated that. None of these are full games, people. None of them are. Just, just, just stop it with the game zone. Stop putting these things on. You know, back in the day, you used to actually get a couple of full games with the machine. Uh, then you've got your Catalyst Control Center. Acer uh, System Series User's Guide. Um, e Sobe version 2, whatever that's supposed to be. Extras and Upgrades. Windows Vista made a big deal about the Anytime Upgrade. It's like, oh, well, you know, you can add more features to a version of Windows. And I guess that was a good thing, because I remember having Vista Business while at university, um, but I really wanted Windows Vista Ultimate, because, you know, Media Center. So um, I did Anytime Upgrade to it. It was uh, quite a good process. Only thing was, when I needed to reinstall... 
I had to install Business and then I had to install Ultimate over the top of that. So that was a bit messy. Uh, you've got your regular window ga Windows games, and yes, I have to do it. Yay, parable place! Um, Microsoft Office. Um, this this will be basically a trial, unless you activate it. NTI backup now. NTI Media Maker Eight. Oh goody. So. That's basically the machine, you know, and you've got, um, one thing that, um, you do have is, oh, thank you and congratulations for purchasing an Acer product. Thank you. So I know I probably shouldn't do anything with this machine while it's actually working, but, um, uh, I want to know what eSobi is. I, I... I can't quite work out what it's supposed to be or supposed to do. That's another thing I found with these machines. What you get is a bunch of installers. <laughs> okay, so import default channel. I'm guessing that would be United Kingdom. Um, eSobi. If you are not an eSobi member, please fill out the following new member activation service. Yeah. I, yeah. eSobi, thank you for choosing eSobi. Please activate your software within the 14 day grace period. Um, I guess I can find out what it does. I don't, I, I, oh, newsstand, uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's, <laughs> this thing actually still works, well, it's got an RSS reader, Two point five introduction and activation. <clears throat> um, this product focuses on common problems of information management on the internet. It uh, utilizes newsreader, multimedia podcast, internet search, and info library features to solve the problems of information overflow. So basically it just kind of takes things from RSS feeds and manages them. I'm sorry, why would I, why would anyone want to pay for this? I'm pretty sure there was uh, free things on the internet that did that already. But yeah, I mean this is the sort of stuff that you could expect on a machine back here. You know, back at this, uh, back in this time. So. What else do we have? Well, we have Windows Vista Media Center. Windows Vista Media Center was actually a great big improvement over the XP one. Ah, oh, that takes me back. Well, um, Windows DVD Maker. That never, I could never get that working on Vista. I think I'd. Might have had it working a couple of times on Windows 7. Um, Microsoft Office 2007. Microsoft Works. Uh, Microsoft Works. I think we've all seen Works 9 now. It's it's basically this. That's basically what it... Actually, I don't think this is Works 9. I think this is actually Works 8.5. It is. So uh, they've not even given us the latest version of Microsoft Works. This version was out in 2005. It's 
I mean, it's, it's not... Um, I don't suppose it's bad because there's, there's really nothing... I mean, I don't really use Wax. I haven't since Wax 4, if I'm honest. Um, I just kind of use it, you know, basically a um, center point for all the different components of Wax Suite to be accessed from. But I don't uh, see any real difference between Wax 8.5 and Wax 9. Apart from, Wax 9 actually allows the integration of the Office 2007 applications. That's quite nice. Um, what else can I show you on here? A Acrobat Reader 9. To be honest, I, after that, I really don't think I can show you much of anything else. Because there's really nothing else to show. So, this is the Acer Aspire M3201. Seems like a reasonably good computer. Uh, before we do go, I, I want to have a look at the Windows Experience Index. Uh, see if it's any good for gaming. 3.7. So, with a system like this, you're, you're basically going to be playing basic games, if any. Although, I did manage to, you know, get a couple of uh, newer games running uh, with the NVIDIA, well, on my 2007 custom belt, which also got a score of 3.4 or 3.5 or whatever it was. I, I, I completely forget, but, um, yeah. Anyway... I think I'm going to end this video here, so thank you very much for watching, and please join me for my next video. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to click on the links to subscribe to the channel, to like videos on Frontier on Facebook, and to follow me on Twitter. But for the meantime, please do feel free to join me for my next video. Cheerio, bye.